you're going to have a look at episode, episodes made by Telestream, and a 30-day trial can be downloaded from the website telestream.net, um, and all the information is obviously in the iBook and on our website, delivercommercials.com. Now, I love Episode. I think Episode is a fantastic product and is price point pretty good as well. So there's three versions. There's Episode. That's the basic kind of uh, transcoder, which doesn't have a lot or any of the broadcast codecs in there. We have Episode Pro, which has a lot of broadcast codecs in there, like GXF, MXFs. And Episode Engine is the enterprise version, and it allows doing multiple encoding and unlimited threads on that, which is fantastic. Now, Episode allows you to do watch folders, um, either reading or sending to, but it's a little bit convoluted on what it's all about and how to set these up. Now, this is not a episode in and out tutorial on what it is. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you about the bookmarks or the watch folders, and we're going to have a look at a 608 setting, which has been a lot of confusion in the industry. So, to create a watch folder, you go up to bookmarks, you right click and you say add bookmark it will present you with an untitled and over here you can see local directory FTP or Samba so if you're working on a network you'll be able to pick up that there if you're looking at an FTP you'd obviously put have to put in your server information your username and your port numbers and then that will be able to read that folder so if you're going to be grabbing information from an FTP it's awesome if you have to upload to an FTP for your digital distributor, this again is a fantastic little workflow. So have a play of that, it's absolutely dead easy once you know what's going on. So over in the top here we have workflows. You can set up different workflows as in if you're going to digital different digital distributors, pardon me. You can have a workflow for uh, company A, company B, company C and you can keep them in there. And when you're ready, you can just lift these workflows down into this pane here, and then that will have all your FTP details in there. It's very clever. In your sources, um, this is what we were talking about before, which is your FTP sources, uh, your Samba or your locals. And in Coda, this is where it gets very cool. So I'm running the troll demo of Episode Pro here, and you can see you've got a lot of audio things through here. We've got broadcast GXF and MXFs, uh, the leads to the Omnion servers, but what I've given you is down in user encoders, you'll download these from the website, uh, delivercommercials.com, and there's also a, a link on showing you where to place these on your system, on PC and Mac. Once you've placed them in that section, you'll be able to see there's um, certain digital distributors in there as well, and some basic ones for you to get started with. So let's have a quick look at the standard definition MPEG-2. As you can see, this is a program two. stream and the video codec is MPEG-2 and the audio is MPEG-audio. When I select each of these codecs, you'll see below in the panes, they will move to those desired codec functions. Let's have a look at the MPEG-2 first. In this case, it's 50 meg, it's 16 by 9, and it's a GOP structure of iframe. iframe represents each frame has its own specific GOP information on it. Long GOP will be a smaller file size, but you'll be finding it very difficult to jog between each of the frames as well, because PAL has a 12 frame buffer of um, Long GOP, and NTSC has 15. Let's have a look at the advanced section through here. We've got color spacing 422, as we talked about before, 420 is DVD, so we're going for 422, and to give them, the digital distributors, a 608 or a 512 file, you need to select your add VBI. Failing to do this will give the digital distributor a 72408 or 576 file with no VBI. Giving in this will give the VBI or the 32 lines of blank information at the top of the frame, then they can actually insert the teletext, the WSS or whatever in region that you need to do. So in this case we're looking at a 50i MPEG 2 422608. There's a lot of acronyms in there. Let's have a look at general now and go down and have a look in this section. We've selected the frame rate, which is going to a power section, so it is 25 frames. The resize, this is where the confusion can set in. As you see, we're doing a 720 by 576. If we do 720 by 608, it will actually letterbox it, or if it even does the encoding, because it's not a standard format. So ticking that VBI section is saying, I understand that you're 72576 of live footage 
if you tick this VBI section, I'm going to give you a VBI section for your digital distributor. It's a little bit confusing, but once you've done it a couple of times and looked at the files back on VLC, you will notice that the blank VBI up the top. We don't want to distort in any way as in letterbox, and we don't need to crop it. Now let's go and have a look at the audio. So if we scroll the way back up and look at our audio codec, we're going to scroll right to the bottom here, and whoop, let's go right to the bottom here, and sample rate is always going to be 48, and the offset, and this is quite interesting, when you're transcoding to MPEG, there's a slight slippage in milliseconds. So what we've done in this preset is given you the 28 millisecond preset, uh, sorry, offset, which allows for no slippage. Every time you transcode to an MPEG-2, you do get a slight slippage. Now this is absolutely unseeable or un unaudible in the human ear. But if you're going down and transcoding from file to file, sixth or seventh generation, you might get a quarter of a frame delay in the transcode. So we've given you the slippage here, which will allow it. Best thing to do is transcode a file, export it as AIFF or WAV, put it back into Soundtrack or Encore, and have a look at when the clap or the, the audio kicks in. I always do a beep on the countdowns, and it's always good to just see where it's actually lying. <laughs>